Hey, welcome to Elements Church. My name is Ephraim Alisea. I'm the pastor here. Happy Sunday. Um, I hope uh, I hope Christmas was beautiful. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, your celebrations were awesome. And that God has definitely been in the mix of all of them. Today, we're just going to celebrate. Our first song is Little Drummer Boy. Then he smiled at me, but up upon me and my drum. Then he smiled at me, but up upon me and my drum. The next song is the first Noel. Was the certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields as they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. No well, no well, no well, no well. Born is the king of Israel. The first no well. The angels did say, was the certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields as they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. No well, no well, no well, no well. Born is the King of Israel. No well, no well. The first Noel, the angels did say, was the certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields as they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Prospero año y felicidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, prospero año y felicidad. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas, I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas, I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas, I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, prospero año y felicidad. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, prospero año y felicidad. Come on. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Yes, praise God. 
God. All right, so now we're going to go to, um, I'm going to take it out to the world. The song, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive a King. Let every heart prepare Him room. Let heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Get your maracas out, man. Son. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men play songs and pour. Why fields and floods, rocks, hills and plain. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat. bless your word. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the angels, I'm sorry, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Verse 15, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who were lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. So, you know, every year I struggle with some, some of the, the visuals of, of Christmas, some of the visuals of of this season, um, do you realize that our, our images of Christmas come from medieval art and probably Christmas cards? But definitely medieval art. Like, like think about the three kings. It, it could have been up to two years after Jesus was born. Just, you know, theologically speaking, they say it might have been up to two years. Historically speaking, it might have been up to two years before um, they found Jesus or they came to him and so on and so forth. Two years, but the Bible makes it sound like, right? We, when the way we interpret scripture, 
makes us think that it was right away. Um, think about that for a second. See, I struggle with this because that means for two years, Herod was trying to kill baby boys. Two years. And we also have no idea how many of the wise men actually came, right? We don't know that for sure. We don't. The Bible doesn't give us a number. We don't know. We, we know it's more than one because it said wise men, plural. We know that. But it could have been two, three, six. And I think I preached a couple of weeks ago saying it might have been a caravan of people. We don't, we don't know. Um, the scriptures don't tell us that. But what we do know is that they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. All right? I guess that's where the idea comes from that there were three of them. But if we're confused about the Magi, which is the correct way of saying it, by the way, then we probably misinterpret the shepherds too. And to me, um, to me, the shepherds are utterly important. And you'll see why. I hope you see why. Because I think we misinterpreted some of that, right? We have image, first of all, the mis first inter misinterpretation is the, the image of these, oh, these really nice shepherds. They're such nice guys, right? They always... They always picture them with the staff and tending to the sheep. Well, in those days, man, in, in those days, shepherds were considered like dishonest. They were dirty because they slept out in the field watching the sheep all night. They also led the, the sheep to lands that weren't theirs. So, you know, that's the way they were thought of. And we've sentimentalized this because of our images um, they look kind, they look gentle, and that's probably not close to the truth, man. Um, but I want you to, I, I don't know if Randy mentioned this last week, I think he did in passing, I'm not sure. But who did the angels go to first? They went to the shepherds. The angels went to the shepherds. Isn't that kind of strange? If they're like the lower of the low, the lowest of the low? They're not high class. Um, they're not on the move, you know, up and coming. It's grassroots, man. It's down to earth stuff. And they could have gone to like the temple to talk to all those wonderfully religious folk, right? They could have gone to, uh, to, to the palace, the king, Herod, or, or, or even Caesar. They could have done that, the angels. And I wonder why God did it the way he did, man. I think he came because of them. I think he came because of them, and therefore he came because of me. He came because of them, and therefore he came because of me. We discover, I think, the heart of God here and, and the meaning of the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, it's a beautiful, to me, it's like a graphic. It's like a, a flyer with the best graphic of Jesus, the one who was sent to the lowest of the low, the outcast. Right. And in this picture, we're reminded of that. We're reminded that Jesus came for people just like the shepherds, a.k.a. people just like me, just like me. The shepherds, a.k.a. at the time, you know, the hood, the worst. Right. That's who God came for. Not the religious elite. Not for not for not. He didn't come to the politicians. He didn't come to royalty. Instead, he came to the least of these. And I think that's dope. Now, now, let me let me just read a little bit of text for you. All right. In the same region, verse 8, it's the same text, we're just, just rereading peace. In the same region, in the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Hmm. And today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. He is the Savior, the Lord. So the angels came to the shepherd. They came to everyday people. And this moment is about God meeting us. Not on, not just on high holy days, not on Easter for us, right? Not, not, not in special service nights. No, 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 no. This moment is about God meeting us on ordinary days in their regular workday. <laughs> ordinary places, but in an extraordinary way. The birth of Jesus is about God coming to us in, in our everyday lives, every day, and telling us, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I, I'm proclaiming the good news. I am the good news. That's what he's telling us. 
Listen, it's about God meeting us in our pain and in our loneliness. Think about that for a minute. Has God met you in 2020 in your pain and your loneliness? It's about God meeting us in our frustration and in our anger. Frustration and anger. Has God met you there in 2020? He definitely has me. It's about, it's about God meeting us Monday and Wednesday and Friday. You know, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, every day. Not just on, on a special occasion. It, it's about God wanting to be wanting to be a part of our lives every day that that's what jesus coming means to me that he wants to be a part of my life every day i think i think that's why god sent the angels to the shepherds i really do to let us know that this child was for all people even the most ordinary like a shepherd like a like a dude from from spanish harlem like a person from the Bronx, ordinary. It, it, it's like it's like a story that I read um, about this beautiful, well-to-do church. I mean, it was beautiful. It was big. It's pretty. It's pretty big. It had it had all the bells and whistles. They had like their senior pastor, then they had like twelve other pastors, then they had a deacon board and an elder board, and they had ushers, and they had a. A, a huge worship team and they had a parking lot actually they had a parking lot pastor i mean beautiful all, all good things right beautiful church but then one day this kid from from the block from around the block maybe around the way decided he wanted to go to church so he he walks in it might have been one of those special days right and he walked in and somehow my man slipped past all the ushers, he slipped past. All the deacons, he slipped past. All, you know, brother so-and-so who is always watching, making sure the deacons are on board. And if they're not doing the thing that he jumps, you know, you know, we have all of those people in churches. Not our church, but in churches. Anyway, um, he slipped by them and he walks into the sanctuary and, and he's looking for a seat for himself. This big church, there's no usher. He's looking around. Because he walked in by himself, the ushers that were in there already and saw him, they thought he had, he was looking for the seat he already had. Like, you know, he was just coming back. But he didn't find a seat. And so he looks around. He went like this. And he sat down right there on the floor, right in, right in the aisle. And suddenly the head usher, I'm talking about the one who had been an usher from the beginning. This is the big dog usher. He saw the young man sitting on the floor and he walked slowly to the man. And uh, I, I mean, everyone around him is, is looking, they're watching and, you know, hey, look, look what's going on. Hey, brother, so-and-so, you know, look, look, look what's going on. And I, I dare say that at least some of the, of the leaders and at least some of the 12 pastors, some of them took delight in the fact that head usher man, He'd stand him up. How dare he? He would correct him. How dare he? How dare he? How dare he think he could come and worship in our church sitting on the floor in the middle of the aisle? You can't do that. It's unacceptable. Now, it took a while for Hush Head Usher Man to get to him because he was old and um, you know, he, had to, he had to lean heavily on his cane as he walked. So he gets there, he stops beside the young man leaning again as he gets down on the floor. He lowered himself slowly. He sits next to the guy. He says, yo, he didn't mean to say, yo, he was older. But he says, may I sit with you? Head usher man sat down next to the guy and worshiped with him so that he wouldn't be alone. And to me, that's what Jesus did. That's what God has done. He, he came to earth to sit, to stand, to run beside us so that you and I were never, ever alone again, ever. And Christ promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You need to make that your mantra. I will never leave you or forsake you. I am always here. I am always with you. I am always beside you. I'm always around you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. These are the things we need to hold on to. Christ promised himself, I will never leave you or forsake you. God met the shepherds 
where and when they were out on the field, tending the sheep late at night. I mean, they were in the midst of, there was a work day for them. And that's where God met them, where it was probably least expected. And after, and after everything is said and done, that's exactly what the birth of Christ means. God will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And, and as we head into a new year, man, I, I'm praying that we will remember that. That no matter what comes in 2021, 2020 was tough. But praise God, we're still here. And yeah, we may have lost people, right? And we, 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 we've prayed about that a lot. I know you have. But I pray that 2020 just be a slightly, a slightly different feel for you, at least. In the sense that you remember that God has not forsaken you. He will never leave you ever, ever, ever. He's always at your side in the good and the bad. He wants to be with you at all times. And I pray 2021 be just more the same with that thought. Because I believe that that's what Christmas is about. I believe Christmas is about God coming to us as a gift. Um, I believe that it's him telling us, giving us like a visual, what do you call it? A, a, an illustration, a visual, super visual illustration that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's just pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we, um, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for 2020. Uh, despite all the difficulties, and I know that many of us, you know, we're going through some hard times still, whether they're emotional or physical or spiritual, Lord, we place them all in your hands, especially as we end this year. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, to be God, to love us the way you always have, and help us to find a way that we could respond to that love, Lord. Help us to be strong. Help us to know, recognize, believe that you will never leave us or forsake us, especially as we go into this new year. Um, I pray that you will give us hope for the new year, hope um, and joy and peace for the coming year. And um, we believe that you will never leave us or forsake us. So stay with us, God. And if you stay with us, I know, I know this. I know these people listening. I know these people watching. We will give you the glory and the honor, Lord, because it's all yours anyway. We'd be nothing without you. And so we invite you, God, to be, to be the, the, the center of our 2021, of our new year, as we close this one out. We thank you for the blessings and the protection of 2020, but we're looking forward to the joy and the peace of 2021. And so we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, guys, God bless you. I pray that, um, that God will bless you in a mighty way. And uh, it's coming next to some announcements. All right, they're just going to roll. And then peace and blessings. We love you. Ooh.